Hey everybody, uh, Bose here. Hey everybody, it's Gamer Gramps here. I know it's been forever, but I'm finally back on YouTube and I'm definitely happy to be here. Special thanks to Bose for letting me do this. Today you've got the best of both worlds. We're going to be watching a tutorial to teach you how to win at Civilization 6. I'd like to welcome you to a new series that I like to call Civilization 6 in 6 minutes, where I break down all of the different victory types in 6 minutes or less. Now, obviously, this video is a little longer than 6 minutes because... I was just about to point that out, so it's good that he's on top of things i'm explaining the series <laughs> uh but with that being said um we're gonna be going over domination today uh it i consider that probably my best victory type my vi best victory condition it's what i'm most experienced with well that's a good thing because it's my least favorite victory type and the one i have the least amount of victories in i've just always been a sucker for science and culture victories myself i don't know it just to me personally i can't win at domination clearly as fast as, as Bose is here. He's doing it pretty damn fast for the most part. So when it gets to that middle stage of the game and the late stage of the game, it drives me nuts how long it takes to finish your fucking turns. Like when it's just like moving unit after unit after unit. Having cores and armies, I think they're called, does help quite a bit, but it's still tedious. So hopefully he'll be able to help me learn some things here to start winning games in 148 turns <laughs> or, or, or less, ideally. Um, and we are playing, uh, assuming that we are playing on Deity, which is what I play on. So this will hopefully help you win on Deity with Domination, give you the main ideas for, for Deity Domination games as well. That's the plan. So uh, fingers crossed, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, as always, if you do not know, uh, I stream Deity Civilization 6 on twitch.tv slash Uh And I mean, you're obviously watching on YouTube. So if you aren't familiar with me, you'll find all of my playthroughs edited on this channel, uh, as you can see right here um but regardless this is going to be domination tutorial we're playing with simon bolivar this is a really fast simon bolivar game playing with eight civs uh on a standard speed or standard size map with uh standard speed and it was a sub 200 i know simon bolivar is a little crazy but uh i felt like it was a good way to showcase how i guess easy domination can be if you know know all the different timings and know how to play it so well, that's a good thing then, because I'm no, no, I'm I'm not gonna be playing with with Grand Columbia for my first game back. But I've actually decided to do my first game back on the channel is going to be a domination game. Clearly, I, I think you probably picked up on that by now. It's going to be played with Montezuma of the Aztecs, because I played once upon a time. I did a live stream that was like 15 hours straight where I, I tried domination with the Aztecs using vampires and i want to do that again but do it better than i did yeah other than that the one quick note i do have to say his beard makes me so jealous that i want to cry and on that note let's continue on uh with that being said let's go ahead and jump in and hopefully we can break it down for you all right so the first thing we're going to talk about here is timings uh and timings in general now with in regards to domination that is getting specific timings with your holy shit this is fast <laughs> <laughs> maybe i'm just old but it's very it's like flashing like a lot hopefully my old eyes adjust to it but uh research tech units government etc uh to hit at the same time uh the main three in the beginning of the game are your getting your great generals around the same time you are getting swordsmen uh, as well as getting oligarchy at the same time. Uh, this allows you to kind of... Yeah, on, on DD, I have to agree, obviously. Like, I'm not an expert by any means at domination games, but I do know that much. It, it, it's it's crucial. Like, even if you're not necessarily going to be going swordsman or whatever, like, you can do use other units in, in the early domination game. But the the policy card, oligarchy, I think he said it was. I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. Anyways, uh, that gives you plus four combat strength your melee units is very very important you basically should be using it all all the time and also the, the maneuver policy card i think it is if you're going to be going the cavalry route you definitely want to slot that in take over the deficit that you have from playing behind on deity with the ai getting extra uh, experience in combat okay let's read these because like i i mean i i know that they do get advantages but it's been so long i and i i honestly fuck i, I never had them memorized so thank you for, for having this for me here let's see so they get 32 percent science culture and faith yeah that sounds about right 80 percent production and gold plus four combat strength plus 40 percent combat experience ah see i never knew the combat experience for sure and then the free tech and civic boost i knew that and obviously i i, I knew all about the starting settlers the warriors and the builders because i love to steal their builders uh, but yeah let's continue on 
combat strength uh, throughout the rest of the game. With this, uh, you should be rushing bronze working, maybe not like immediately as your first tech, but you know, going mining and then maybe into getting bronze working till it, it could be boosted and then working on something else. Uh, you know, killing barbarians so you can boost bronze working. But your encampment should be your first district place down. Uh, for me, this game uh, is a little bit different. I want a holy site, but in general, your encampment should be the first district you place down so that way you can start uh, accumulating great general points immediately. Now, with that, uh, once you hit all of now, I have to chime in here, too, if I remember right, if you're doing a timing where you're not going for, like, a swordsman timing, if you're going to hit a little bit later, like if you're doing horsemen and other such things, it can also be useful if your first district is a campus. But we're going to keep things nice and simple here and just focus on this. Oligarchy, you should be able... Now that I think about it, it would make the most sense because the Aztecs have their eagle warriors, I, th I think they're called, their, their unique unit there early in the game, so I'm definitely going to be going the melee route to be getting your great general out right around that time maybe a couple turns later uh it, but it'll be, it'll be around that time and you also should be getting swordsmen around that time now with this um i hit swordsman right as i'm declaring war on cyrus uh because i just saw that he had a settler out in the middle of nowhere so i capitalized on that and stole a settler from him um but with that moving he won up me of course bows ones up me i talk about stealing builders and he has to go and get a settler fucking Rick. On from timings uh, that we can talk about military. Now with your military, uh, for me, I generally actually keep a pretty small military the entire game. I usually start off with three to four archers and then around two to three swordsmen and then a battering ram if needed. Um, but for the most part in the classical era war, you really that's all you really need. Uh, a, a big mistake that I see happen a lot with a lot of people who are asking for advice for you know starting to do domination on deity is they consistently just build army the entire game and what you really want to do is just make sure you're i 100 percent agree with him here you want to build yourself a strong starting army but you ultimately just want to upgrade your units so that just become better and better and better you do not want to be producing a shit ton of games in the the middle and later stages of the game like you should be racing for your production i mean you should be chopping forests into units you should be freaking doing everything you can to get your units out there as fast as possible so that they can start accumulating experience and getting the upgrades that make them even more powerful and then obviously upgrade them as your technology allows as you go throughout the game too on top of that, one thing I would definitely recommend, and I don't know if he touches upon it here, so maybe this is just going to be like verbal diarrhea and you're going to get hit with this twice if Bose touches on it. But what I like to do is to basically chop out two separate armies and send them in two different directions. And this has always helped me to win faster, basically, because I'm just, I'm competitive as all hell and I want to win as, as fast as I fucking can. And yeah, so... Hopefully he touches on it here, but if not, let's continue on. First core army stays alive and then supplement it as the game goes on. Uh, but mostly, you know, once you have your first core army, then you just spend the rest of your time with your cities, uh, building infrastructure, things along those lines. Um, with your military, like I said, you'll, you only want a couple archers uh, and swordsmen. And then as the game goes on, you know, once you research men at arms, you get men at arms, then you'll get musket men, move on to line infantry. Uh, so on and so forth through the game. Uh, but w with that, you generally don't want to have a huge army. Um, just enough that way you can uh, snipe a city, take it, and then move on. Maybe defend yourself if needed. Um, but keeping the core army alive throughout the whole game allows you to really kind of destroy the AI because you'll have, you know, double shot. Uh, Sorry, but yeah, I'm just stopping this here because I want to see the upgrade tree. It's been so long. But yeah, I I personally, like, I don't know what he's going to talk about here, but I generally go with volley almost of my, my ranged units because, like, they're they're offensive. But the incendiary, uh, the, 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 I can't even talk right now. The incendiaries bonus here is good too. But generally speaking for me, I usually go down the, the left side of the tree for, for my ranged units anyways. But then again, it is nice to have suppression on a ranged unit or two for the zones of control because it really makes... It really makes limiting the AI's movement ability as well as putting their cities under siege a lot easier. So keep that in mind too. It might be something you want to check out. Archers, you know, that move into um, move into crossbowmen. Uh, maybe having uh, swordsmen that uh, you know don't have the penalties attacking across water, things along those lines. Uh, and if you have 
Oop, we're going to rewind that back for a second here. I just to go through the melee combat bonuses here. I personally always take battle cry as the first one because you got to really think about it. Ultimately, the tur tortoise gives you plus 10 combat strength when defending against ranged attacks. However, with battle cry, you get the plus seven combat strength versus melee and ranged units. So ideally, like, or sorry, not ideally, ultimately, like realistically, tortoise is only giving you a plus three combat strength and it's only when you're getting attacked by ranged units however the battle cry gives you plus seven against both melee and ranged and it's also when you're attacking as well as defending so it's just hands down it's a fucking way 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 better promotion not to mention the commando motion the next one plus one movement again it's just crazy big like even in water maps commando is way better than amphibious there's just there's no no question whatsoever that the for the first two stages anyways the left side of the promotion tree is way stronger and I, i'd highly recommend you stay on the left side unless you you really have your heart set for whatever reason to do something differently uh and then ultimately for me my taste personally i think there's no like again the plus seven combat strength against anti-calorie units like there's just no way that urban warfare getting plus 10 combat strength when fighting in a district is gonna be less valuable or sorry the other way around there's no way that fucking urban warfare is not gonna be better than, than that promotion at all and then obviously elite guard is just elite guard and is safe uh, swordsmen that uh, you know don't have the penalties attacking across water things along those lines uh, and if you have tanks you know that are fully upgraded and artillery that have plus one range near the end of the game you really don't need a huge army to destroy the ai now outside of your actual army uh, there are going to be things that you will really need to utilize uh, and there are a few of them uh, policy cards are one of them as well as governors um, i generally still go a pingala into uh, victor because victor allows you to get the uh, combat strength, but additionally allows you to keep loyalty in cities. Um... I'm just going to pause it right here and go back for a second. And personally, when I do play it, I usually go for Magnus first because ultimately, like, I think chopping your army out fast faster is is better but i mean it's personal preference really it, it it is what it is and especially too because like i i like to go and promote magnets down to the strategic reese or sorry not the strategic resource or <laughs> fucking the black marketeer promotion which allows you to get strategic resources the the amount that they it costs you to make your units uh, reduced by like 80 percent, i think or maybe it's 50 i don't know it's been a while but anyway it so that's that's like my little take on things where it's a little bit different but yeah pingala would definitely be a good choice like and i would look to do that after i get magnus out first personally victor allows you to get the uh, combat strength but additionally allows you to keep loyalty in cities um which will be an issue in your classical era wars uh, additionally utilizing policy policy cards correctly um if you're having trouble with loyalty make sure you put in ones like limitine and praetorium as they allow you to uh, keep your cities loyal um additionally running cards like agoye so that way you can pop out is that really how you pronounce it i like i'm sure he is pronouncing it right incorrect because that just sounds smart and sounds like sophisticated i swear to christ i've been calling it a goje for like ever and i thought i was i was correct so i'm just gonna go out on a limb and say i am wrong and my mind is blown I, in fact i want to hear Bo say that one more time just just for the hell of it a goye so that a goye a goye a goye i am never gonna remember that but i'm gonna try my damnedest to remember it a goye a goye all right. For the love of God, don't spam the comment section with the pronunciation of that word. <laughs> Anyways, let's continue. That way you can pop out units very fast if needed, uh, as well as limes, which allows you to... Okay, this isn't a pronunciation video, but I had no idea. I, I, I've i never pronounced it right. I've never tried to pronounce it right, but lime... Oh, I'm not even going to try. Just fuck it. Let's continue on. Uh, get walls up if you need to defend. Um, I see people running cards that have nothing to do with what they're trying to do. Um, you know, for example, running like Gothic architecture when they're not, you know, building any wonders and stuff like that. So making sure you're utilizing, uh, you know, policy cards as well as governors throughout the game uh, really help you, especially in the early game when you're trying, you know, every single beat, pit, bit of production and culture, you know, science gold uh, helps. 
a hundred percent agree with him there. And that, like, that's one thing I've always really stressed when, when trying to teach people how to play the game better and, and how they can play the game faster and to, to quickly rank up in the difficulty levels, but like to, to get up to DD as quickly as you can. If, if that is something that you want to do, I mean, you do, you play whatever fucking level you want to play on. I'm just saying for those that are interested in getting up as quickly as possible, policy cards are something that doesn't take a lot of effort, but it has a huge, huge impact on how fast you can play the game. And the, the better you get at controlling your policy cards, the better you'll get at the game. Now, from here on out, all you really need to do is just keep up with the AI. Um, since you have a core army, you don't really need to continue to build your armies. So what you can do is start to build up your infrastructure, uh, such as building campuses. Um, that way you can keep up with tech commercial hubs. Uh, you'll need to use your commercial hubs to pay for you know, upgrades, as well as keeping up with maintenance. Um, maybe holy sites if you need to get heroes out, if you're playing with heroes and legends. I honestly that it's so funny because the fucking the uh heroes and legends mode has been out for so so long because like I mean it's 2024 now but I honestly have not played a single game with that game mode like I am really looking forward to trying that game mode out and just seeing what the hell it's all about but on that note yeah I'm agreeing with everything he's saying here the only difference is like I, I said I personally would really suggest chopping out a second army and setting it in the opposite direction of your first army so that you can just win out the game that much faster uh as well as maybe a, a theater square or two that way you can keep your culture going but for the most part as long as you keep up with your as far as keeping your culture going and the science and all that, uh, if you don't already know, I would highly suggest pillaging. Pillaging your enemy civilization's tiles is a great way to help yourself keep up. Like getting the infrastructure is super important. Like he's talking about here, getting campuses and theater squares and, and all that kind of stuff. But also pillaging helps so much. And, and in order to help you pillage better, there's different policy cards in the game that are just unbelievably powerful and i'd highly suggest you use them i can't remember them off the top of my head because i haven't played this game in a long long time but i'm gonna say fuck it obviously i'm gonna go look for them and edit them in so you can see for yourself right now the two policy cards that i'm talking about uh there's this one here and then there's this one here and you should definitely be using those policy cards and taking advantage of how quickly they can help you get not only money and gold to upgrade your troops and keep your army like as good as it can be, but also to give you the extra science and culture to help get you down the tech tree and civic tree that much faster. Not to mention, even pillaging faith can really be useful if you end up going and getting, forget the name of the building, but the upgrade in your government plaza that allows you to buy units with that, it's a good way to supplement your armies in the middle and late game that doesn't really cost you anything other than building the addition to the government plaza and anywho let's continue on in here what Bose says with your campuses and your commercial hubs you will really have no problem uh steamrolling over the ai uh once you once you kill your first one you you hop over to the second one do the same thing maybe wait a few turns upgrade your units uh and and then kill the the ai from there now from here uh once you get to a certain point you're either gonna have to choose one or two paths uh, you can either go top tree and build bombers and leapfrog uh, airstrips with bombers and kill the AI. Or what I generally like doing is going bottom tree since it's a little bit easier. Yeah, I personally pretty much always go bottom tree. Like, I, I just think that getting artillery here and tanks and stuff, you're already progressing down that road anyways. I think it's a lot easier and faster than going the, the bomber route. Anywho, that's my two pennies worth. Is getting tanks as well as artillery and uh, killing the AI at that point. Um, what when it comes to this point of the game, uh, having a few, having two artillery with uh, plus one range really makes a whole lot of difference. It sure as hell does. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, and and that allows you to just melt through through Renaissance walls. Uh, especially with tanks, fully upgraded tanks, which if you have been keeping them alive through the entire game, uh, you should have fully upgraded tanks, upgrading them to uh, maybe only building new units to upgrade them into cores and or uh, arm armies as the as the time goes on. So uh, from here, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to take his word that it is. We'll continue on. But I just want to say, if you haven't already, please do me a favor and leave, leave a like on the video. It really does go a long way to helping a small channel like me grow, and I'd appreciate it if you took the time to do so uh let's continue on you you kill a sit you kill a sieve repair a district take your units heal them move on to the next sieve and add 
you take all their capitals. Uh, that's really all there is to say about that. In conclusion, uh, with this classical era war setup, there's really a few things that you, all you really have to do. Uh, making sure you hit your timing in the early era uh, to in order to hit the AI right when before they get crossbowmen. Uh, making sure you have your core military alive through the entire game. Utilizing policy cards to get all of the maximum benefits that you can. Um, keeping up with the AI while you transition through your eras and just kill the AI. Um, overall, like... <laughs> just kill them easy peasy. I like that. <laughs> Like I said, it, it is pretty simple, uh, but I know people struggle with it a lot, uh, especially once it gets to D.A.D., so eventually I will have a full-fledged domination tutorial. But for now, this is Civilization Six in six minutes. Um, we went a little over six minutes because it's the first time I'm doing this, but I hope this helps. And if you have any further questions, please leave them in the comments below. All right. Well, there it is. That is uh, Civilization Six in six minutes for domination. Um, I hope that you guys were able to at least take something away from it and be able to apply it to, to your D80 games. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just really, you know, take your first Civ, uh, take your main army from your first Civ and, you know, kill the rest of them with that main army while you build infrastructure in the background. So uh, I hope that helped. Um, if you have any further questions or if there's any things that you maybe feel lost on, feel free to leave comments uh, in the comment section down below. So clearly... I'd say the same thing. Feel free to leave, leave questions and comments and whatnot down below. Uh, it's not going to be in Bose's channel. But again, I do want to say thank you to Bosius for letting me uh, actually do this reaction video. I appreciate the help from him on that regard. Uh, hopefully you found this video interesting. A little bit of a double take from him and me. Uh, like I said, I am rusty as hell at the game, but I do know quite a bit about it. And yeah, it's on a personal note, it's been a long while and I'm happy to be back on YouTube finally. It's it's something I've worked hard for and you'll be seeing more of me soon. So with that, I'm just going to shut the hell up and let you get on with your day.